Well, I just received the Trimit 2, and it's a device for trimming brass cases. Let's go ahead and see what's inside the big box here. The official unboxing, there it is. There's the main body. Has a micrometer adjustment on here. It comes with uh, the standard four flute cutter from the Trimit, the original Trimit. I was surprised to see that. I thought they made a mistake, but I read the directions a little bit and it actually had that on there. So you can, that's the one that trims the case, it's just flush on the end. The Trimit 2, however, comes with a, a new trimmer somewhat more elaborate trimmer and it has a carbide insert it's a little three cornered carbide insert it has a little notch cut in there so what this will do is trim to the length bevel the inside of the case to you know, chamfer it and then uh, deburr the outside of the case neck it's all three in one and then it comes with uh, the original trim it I think had just a single Allen key, hex key, that did everything, but that's more than possible with all the stuff that's going on here with the Trimit 2. So it comes with four different Allen keys. And then it comes with, uh, I think, three three of these, uh, they call them caliber dies. They're really, what they are is a sealed bearing with a bushing pushed into there, and that bushing is caliber specific. And by caliber specific, I mean... Uh, for example, 308 Winchester and 300 Blackout both use a, the same size bullet, but the cases are different. So it's actually based on the case. This bushing indexes on the case neck. So it's, uh, you'll have a different uh, caliber die for 300 Blackout, which is what this one is, versus uh, 308, which is what that one is. So I got uh, 300 Blackout, 308, 223, and 338 Lapua. And I believe it comes with three, and I bought the other one as an option, extra. And it wasn't very expensive, so the, you buy one for each caliber, but the, the caliber dies are not that expensive. So if you're getting into volume reloading, where you do a whole lot of brass processing, this really isn't too bad a way to go, I think. So I'll set it up here, and I'm going to be using it in a three-quarter horsepower lathe. There are some other videos out there that show using it in a cordless drill and in a drill press, and that's the instructions refer to that a bit, but I'm going up a bit. I'm going to try doing this uh, horizontally, which I think will be a little easier to do, and using a three-quarter horsepower lathe should make pretty quick work of this brass, I'm hoping. I processed some uh, 50 BMG brass on my two-horsepower milling machine and that, that's a pretty quick way to process brass. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to knock these uh, brass cases out pretty quickly using the power of my lathe. So we'll check back soon and see what's going on with that. Well I'm back after uh, assembling the Trimit 2. I won't belabor the point. The instructions were pretty good. Maybe could have been a little better. But the basic principle is uh, there's that carbide cutter inside here and it's difficult to see down in there, so I'll leave that to better videos to show you that. But the trim die goes up here. That's pretty much just the bushing pressed into the bearing. The brass goes in, bottoms out on the case neck there. That hits the trimmer. The trimmer is adjusted so that the little V-notch is in, just aligns properly with the case neck. So that trimmer will be rotating. In fact, the entire thing rotates, the entire trim it to rotates, only the inside of the bearing is stationary and you press the brass in. So it's difficult to show it sort of a optical illusion. It looks like it's hitting on one side but really the case neck is going right into the little V groove in there and that'll be obvious when you're setting it up. So you lock this set screw to set the, the, the course length and then you use the micrometer adjustment here by loosening this set screw turning it to adjust the fine depth adjustment so you initially set it for the case length, set that, and then you can adjust this in and out very slightly by making the micrometer adjustments. It's a pretty simple concept. This is one of these tools that's simple in concept, but really well executed. I mean, it's a nice heavy duty 
well-built kind of tool that can take a lot of uh, knocking around and abuse if you have to and you know if you overuse it a little bit it's not going to complain and break it's not got little cheap plastic gears or anything it's it's a simple tool but it's really well executed well designed and well executed so far I haven't used it yet but I'm really happy with uh, the overall looks and the way it feels I think this is a substantial tool that's going to hold up for a while so I'll go ahead and mount it in the lathe and we'll demonstrate it actually cutting some I'll cut a few and then get the hang of it so you're not watching the worst of the worst and I'll be back after I've done a few and have the hang of it to show you how it works well I've got it all adjusted and I'm back and I'm going to trim a few pieces and I'll show you how this works I'll just put the brass in next side in obviously turn it about half a turn as it's rotating pull it out it's trimmed to length deburred and chamfered on the inside of the case neck these are actually already cut to the proper trim length but they're cut flush so I'm not removing a lot of brass mostly what I'm doing in this operation today is just chamfering and deburring so what's on there now is about what the original trim it would have done just a flush cut and I'm running about 940 rpms on the lathe and there's a nice you know, silky smooth cut on the end as opposed to the ones I haven't done yet which they're flat cut there's they're not a bad trim, but I can feel just a little bit of graininess to it. These almost feel burnished on the end. There is a slight bit of, uh, almost looks like a burr on the inside, but it's a visual thing. There's just a little bit of adhered brass stuck in there, but it's not really attached. Once I tumble those, it'll come right out of there, so I'm not really worried about that. So it does a pretty nice job trimming and deburring. And it's certainly fast and easy. I'll see if I can get a comparison here between the two. The one, this is the one that I just trimmed. And this is one of the ones I haven't trimmed yet. So, you may be able to see the amount of chamfer in there. I'm not too worried about deburring them. That's not as big a concern for me. I'm loading cast lead bullets. Uh, I'll be powder coating them, but they still tend to trim and shave the lead off as, they're, as the bullets are being seated in the case necks if they're not uh, chamfered on the inside. So this does put a bit of a chamfer on there. It's a little steeper chamfer than I would prefer. I've been using a VLD chamfering tool made for very low drag bullets, so it has a real gradual taper instead of a sharper taper. So instead of the angle being like this, it's more like that. It's a real shallow taper. And that tends to get the bullets headed in there without trim, without shaving the brass off or without scratching the bases on precision bullets that you may have. But this is a, a kind of a standard chamfer angle. I prefer a little shallower, but still, I think it'll be just fine for what I'm doing. I did, uh, when I was setting this up, I've got a little bit of run out in here. I started to put a dial indicator on there and get the run out out, but it wasn't bad enough that I thought it would affect things. And you do the half a turn as it's turning to kind of compensate for any of those sorts of issues anyway. Uh, when I was setting it up, I did it their way first, and then I decided what I liked better. I'm not sure how much of this you can see or not, but when you place the brass in, and it goes into the notch in that cutter, the profile of the cutter notch uh, determines how much of a flat you have on the end, how much of a uh, deburr you have on the outside, and how much of a chamfer you have on the inside. You can scoot it uh, sideways laterally across the case neck a bit to adjust some of that, but the profile itself stays the same. So you can trade a little bit of chamfer for deburr, and I tended to favor chamfer. I didn't really care too much about deburr, so I wanted more chamfer to it. What actually worked best for aligning it, the alignment I thought was a bit on the tricky side. There's a set screw there that you loosen, and then there's a set screw on the other side that you can move it in and out. But uh, I would have preferred having set screws on both sides that capture something. In other words, you put it in uh, tighten, tighten or loosen this set screw to fix the cutter into the, the cutter head and then the cutter head is on a dovetail in there that slides back and forth. I would have preferred having that dovetail captured between two set screws so they could be worked against each other in opposition. This one you just loosen it and kind of push it against it to bias it and then tighten down this little set screw in here to set the cutter in place and tighten this one to kind of hold it. But uh, What I found worked actually better for me was to loosen uh, the set screw that holds the carbide cutter in place and I pushed the brass in and then I biased the brass in such a way that it moved the cutter 
so that it would do more chamfering because that's what I wanted. So it centered up just by pushing it straight in and then to get a little more chamfer out of it, I biased it this way with the cutter on the back side over here. In other words, if it was upside down, it would be the other way, but I'm, I'm biasing, uh, there's a little wiggle in there, not much, but just a little, and it's just enough that by pushing it this way, I moved the cutter that way, and that favored chamfering on the inside of the case neck a little more, and that seemed to be a, a pretty good way to set it, and then while holding that bias, I tightened the set screw that holds the carbide cutter in place. The As I said before, the cut quality seems really good, and it cuts quickly at 940 RPMs on a three-quarter horsepower lathe that you don't have any trouble getting enough power to it to, to do the little bit of brass trimming you want to do there. But uh, I think it actually would have been better not to have used carbide. Carbide lasts forever. It's really hard, but it's difficult to put a really sharp edge on carbide. If they used a high-speed tool triangular cutter insert in there and sharpen that, it'd be easier for them to sharpen. They could sharpen with carbide tools and you would end up with a sharper cutter that could still be plenty uh, durable enough to trim brass for a long long time, but yeah, you'll never wear out this carbide trimmer and it certainly does a good job I'm not I don't want to disparage that at all. It silky smooth Can't really complain about the cut quality at all um, Could be a little easier to adjust I thought but this is the kind of thing you're not going to adjust it a whole lot and to be honest I'm just starting off with it. So uh, I'm sure it'll get better over time. and I'll be able to adjust it more readily at one point I thought maybe I should try and talk them into selling me uh, these cutters, uh, the whole cutter assembly, the shaft and everything. And that way I could set one up for 308 and one up for uh, 223 and one up for 338 and whatever I wanted to cut. And that way the radial distance for the cutter would be set. And then all I'd have to do is set the, the depth. But really I'm not sure that's, I think there's enough fiddle factor in there that I'm not sure that's really worth doing. And it's not all that hard to set it up. If you're gonna do a thousand pieces of brass, Setting it up, not that big of a deal, and after I've done it a few times, I'm sure it'll be even less of a deal. I originally used the chuck of the lathe to grab just the shaft coming out here for the cutter, and I had a bit more run out, so I choked up and grabbed the collar here that the, that, uh, if you can see back in there or not, that the set screw back here tightens down on that shaft to keep the cutter in there. So I grabbed that outer collar, and it got a little less, and I could do better with, uh, putting a dial indicator on there and dialing it in a little more, but it's, it seems more than adequate for what I'm doing. I'm going to fire it up here and you see a little bit of wobble in there probably as the lathe comes up to speed. Another issue that I noticed was that, if you can see it in there or not, but there's a little fine line about right here, a dark line. And it's not really so much a scratch in the brass as it is just a little bit of a marking from where the brass bottoms out in this bushing. So a little bit of force needs to be applied to this bushing to stop the bushing from turning as the bearing turns around it. And apparently a lot of that force is transferred right on the very edge instead of throughout the whole length of the bushing. And it puts a little mark on the brass, but originally I thought it might be a little scratch. I don't know if it comes through in there very well or not. But it wipes right off. So there's almost no, nothing left of it. And once I polish it, then it'll completely go away. There's also a little bit up in the neck there, I think on the, maybe on the other side of the bushing where it's contacting as the bushing rubs around on it. But it was, it's not a big deal. It's just a little different than other methods of trimming, so you might notice that, but I didn't find it to be a problem at all. And yeah, it goes pretty quickly. Trimming brass is pretty easy on here. Because you do have uh, so much brass getting trimmed quickly, it takes a fair amount of torque to hold the brass in there. So while it goes quickly, I wouldn't plan on doing a thousand pieces of brass in one sitting because you're really just using the thumb and one or two fingers to hold the brass. And you have to put a little bit of a torque on there. It's not hard to do, but it's the kind of thing that would eventually get tiring. So I'm planning on doing maybe a hundred pieces of brass at once and then I'll stop, take a break and come back, leave the machine set up and do another hundred or two hundred. But yeah, it's uh, hard to beat that for speed and And uh, it's such a solid tool that the precision of the cut length and all the parameters I'm sure will be very repeatable from piece to piece. I haven't measured that yet, but I, I will, but I'd be surprised if there's any variation to speak of in there. And I think it's gonna be one of the more precise ways of, of uh, trimming brass. 
One thing of note, though, this is a uh, Different cutters work different ways. Some cutters, there's a length gauge that goes in and bottoms out on a stud here in the back, so you're measuring the, you're trimming to the overall length. That's not how this cutter works. This cutter uses this part of the brass here to locate, so it's indexing on the case neck. So it's vitally important that you trim to the proper, or that you resize to push that case neck back where it ought to be, so that the brass is properly resized, and then trim chamfer and deburr, and that'll get you the what you want. If you took a bunch of random length brass in here, trimmed them down, and then resized them, it'd be just kind of a mess. So you don't want to do that. So uh, do a resizing, and then use this to trim and debar and everything. And one thing that I did find helpful when setting this up was geezer vision. I'm getting to be older, and looking down in there, it's kind of difficult to see what I was trying to do when I was aligning all these pieces. It's a little fiddly, so. Light and magnification help to me. But then that little trick I described where I bias the brass a little almost makes it so you can do it without without seeing in there too much. As long as it's in the in the groove properly, and that's not too hard to find. You don't have to look and see the subtle details of which side of the groove is biased to where. You can kind of put it until it bottoms out in the trough of that groove and then bias it over if you want, depending on whether you want more chamfer or more deeper. You can almost do it by, by feel. So overall, I'm very happy with the trim it too. Uh, highly recommend it particularly for people who will be doing a lot of uh, like a thousand at a time sort of uh, brass processing. It's somewhere between piddly little hundred at a time or 25 at a time uh, doing it on your bench versus uh, the commercial side where you have completely automated equipment to do it. This is a nice happy medium for I would say prosumer, half professional, half consumer grade uh, reloaders who are doing fairly large volumes, you know, thousands or so. And it makes pretty quick, pretty quick work of the brass. So hopefully that uh, gives you another insight into how this trim it too can be used. In this case, doing it in a lathe. And if you got any questions, I'll uh, check comments and get back with you. So leave me a comment, and uh, maybe I'll see you out on the range sometime. <laughs>